Grace, 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 just a little more grace. Grace, 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 just a little more grace. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you got. Grace, 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 God-given grace. Hallelujah, holy, holy, holy. God makes you holy. Holy, 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 God makes you holy. Hallelujah, Lord, worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah, Lord. Faith, 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 just a little more faith. Faith, 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 just a little more faith. You don't need a whole lot, just use what you got. Faith, faith, faith is just a little more faith. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father, I thank you for your love, your favor, your holiness, your grace, your mercy. I thank you today, Lord God. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and ending. You are the first, the last, which is, which was, and which is to come. You are all and in all, and through all, and above all, and in us all. And I thank you for that today. I thank you for your love, your grace, your holiness, your favor. God, I pray today in the name of Jesus that you will continue to be miraculous, Lord. Continue to be absolutely miraculous, Lord God, in our lives. And we thank you for that today. You're a mighty God, a glorious Savior. Hallelujah. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and ending. You are the first, the last, which is, which was, and which is to come. You are all and in all and through all and above all and in us all, Lord God. And we thank you for that today in all that you do. We give you all the glory and all the praise, Lord God, in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. God bless you today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. What a glorious, glorious day in the Lord it is today. Hallelujah, Lord God. Today's title, the message title today is Giving Grace. Amen? Giving Grace. Grace, oh hallelujah, Lord God. Grace means unmerited favor, okay? Grace means that you get the good that you do not deserve, amen? Oh hallelujah. Mercy is kind of the flip side of that. Mercy means that you get, you don't get the punishment that you do deserve, that's mercy. But grace is you get good that you have not earned. Oh, hallelujah today. Mercy and grace are both received by faith. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are those who hunger ha, and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Oh, hallelujah today. You have to hunger and thirst after righteousness, after God's righteousness. If you hunger and thirst after his righteousness, which you receive through the humility that lets you bow your head before God and receive the free gift that Jesus has offered you, hallelujah, that will bless you and make you merciful, amen? To receive God's grace, you must learn how to be merciful. You must learn how to be gracious. You must learn how to be kind. First Peter 5 and 8 said, Be sober-minded and be watchful. For your adversary, ha, Lord, or shed your adversary the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But resist him firm in your faith. Hallelujah. Can you hear that today? Resist him firm in your faith, 
knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brethren throughout the world. All the people of faith are suffering and being attacked by the enemy. And the God of all grace, what is that? He is the God of all grace. There is nobody that receives grace that did not receive it from God. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself personally restore you and make you strong, firm, oh hallelujah, and steadfast. Amen? Satan is trying to devour our peace and keep us from God's mercy. Amen? He is trying to eat up and devour our peace, the peace that we need to have and to keep us from God's mercy. The devil is always angry, okay? He works hard to bring that anger out in us, each and every one of us. Romans 3.20 to 24 says, For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, in God's sight, since through the law comes the knowledge of sin. The law wasn't sent to make you righteous. The law was sent so you would know the depths of your sin. The law came so you could go, I can't do this by myself. And God would look at you and go, no, you can't. Let me explain to you a better way. But by now, the righteousness of God is manifest in part or apart from the law. The righteousness of God, the righteousness of God that we desire to have. Oh, hallelujah, today. The Bible said that, that certain people in the Old Testament, amen? Certain people like Abraham, the Bible says Abraham simply believed God. God says, I am going to do this for you. And the Bible says Abraham believed God and God accounted it to him for righteousness. Wait a minute, he just believed. He didn't do anything. No, he just believed God. And because he believed God, God counted it as righteousness, hallelujah today. So the law of righteousness is apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteous of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. So the righteousness of God is through faith in Jesus Christ. What do you mean? It means you have to believe. Abraham, he believed God. God accounted it to him for righteousness. You, you have to believe God and God will account it to you for righteousness. Oh, hallelujah. For there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified, and you need to hear this, by his grace, you are justified, made holy by his grace as a gift. You didn't earn it. You didn't work for it. You didn't do it just right. No, you received it as a gift, as a gift of God. You earned it as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Why are we redeemed by Christ Jesus? Because the holy, sinless Son of God died on the cross, was crucified, buried, rose again up on the third day, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Matthew 7 and 12. In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. This, they call this the golden rule. Do unto others what you would have them do to you. Amen? Make your grace a gift. See, this is the thing. This is what you need to get, if nothing else. Make your grace a gift to others. And God will make his grace 
a gift to you. Oh, hallelujah today. You have to give other people grace. Well, I don't want to forgive you. I don't want to forget. I'm going to keep reminding you of what you did. And so that you never do it again. Well, all you can do when you remind people over and over and over again, all you can do is make them tired of hearing about it. But if you forgive them utterly and completely, oh, hallelujah, today, they will begin to give honor and more grace to your Father in heaven. Why? Because you gave them grace. Hallelujah, Lord God. Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. No corrupt speaking come out of your mouth. But only such as is good for building someone up. Okay, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Are you going to build them up or are you going to tear them down? Which way? Is what you say going to make them feel better about themselves even though they recognize they need to grow? Or is what you say going to make them feel like a dog that just got kicked? You need to ask yourself that question. Let no corrupt talks come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear doesn't matter what they did to you. It doesn't matter what they said to you. It doesn't matter how they acted toward you. You're supposed to still give them grace. What is grace? That is unmerited favor. Now, you might want to give them a little mercy and mixed in with that grace because they might have done something egregious, in which case, if you give them some mercy and then you give them some grace, they'll have the best of both worlds. Ephesians 2, 4, and 5. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, oh, hallelujah, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. He is so rich in mercy that he didn't get you what you do deserve. And he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. How did he give us life when he raised Jesus from the dead? Well, it is because only by God's grace that you have been saved and his grace is found in Jesus. Oh, hallelujah today. You didn't earn God's grace. Okay, you did not earn God's grace and therefore you shouldn't expect everybody around you to have to earn your grace. That's not what grace is. Grace is treating people with love and respect even though sometimes they fall short. Oh, hallelujah today. Ephesians 4 and 7. But to each of us, grace has been given been given as Jesus portioned it out. It says apportioned it in this this particular version. That just simply means he gave the portions. You you got a big pot of stew in the end of the table and dad and and mom are standing there and and mom takes a ladle out. She puts a scoop in in a bowl and pass it down, pass it down, pass it down. What is she doing? She is apportioning it out to people. And then when she counts three, and that's three kids, she knows the next one is going to be dad. So she puts a double scoop in there. She says, pass it down. Well, that means dad got double what everybody else did. Yes, he did. But see, she was the one apportioning it. And here it says that Jesus apportions the grace that is in your life. You feel like it's not fair. Everything is against you. Nobody's ever caring about you. So what you're saying is that Jesus doesn't seem to know what he's doing. Well, since we know that that is incorrect, then it must be something else that is causing a problem. Because do you sometimes feel like life is unfair? Jesus is the one who divides up the grace of God. The question is, do you, 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 
do you offer that same grace to others around you? Ephesians 2 and 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. By grace you are saved. Without grace you are not saved. By the unmerited favor of God you are saved. And not of yourself, it is a gift of God. You didn't deserve it, you didn't earn it. Nobody else, I don't care if you are the, you come up and tell yourself, I'm the preacher that never sins. <laughs> well, that's a lie. But I don't care if you come up and try and say that about somebody. You did not get saved on your own. You got saved by God's grace. He gave you what you did not deserve. And we need to give others that same grace. Hallelujah today. James 4 and 6, but he gives us more grace. And this is why scripture says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble and the oppressed. See, he gives us more. It isn't that we just, we, we got what we needed to be saved, but that wasn't enough as far as God was concerned. It says that I will give you the opportunity to accept me as your savior. And when you have received that, I am going to come to you to see if you are walking humbly before me, because if you are humble or you are oppressed, I will see to it that you receive even more grace, grace upon grace. Hallelujah today. So we need to understand that. We need to understand that God shows favor to the humble, but he opposes, he fights against the proud. 1 Corinthians 15, 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace was not in me, was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace that was in me. Apostle Paul is trying to let you know something. He says, I worked my tail off to be where I am in the ministry today. I worked harder than people around me. Now, somebody might say, well, he was bragging. Well, perhaps he was, but it doesn't say that he was lying. He says that I worked harder than all those around me, but not me. It wasn't me. I'm not getting credit for it because I didn't work that much harder. I worked it because of the grace of God that was in me. Hallelujah. The Bible says your righteousness is a bloody rag. God's righteousness, oh hallelujah, is everything. Only his righteousness matters. You can't earn it. It is a free gift of God. His grace should inspire you to work harder and harder for the things of the kingdom. Amen. Hebrews 4, 16, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. What does that mean? Pray, approach his throne of grace. If you don't spend the time on your knees, humbling yourself before God, crying out to God, asking God for his help, how do you expect God to give you the help that you need, that you, the grace to help? How do you expect him to give you the grace to help in time of need? if you are not going to get on your knees and pray. Hallelujah, Lord God. First Peter 5 and 5, in the same way you who are younger, now this is not very popular today, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. All of you clothe yourself with humility toward one another. Now this is one that kind of gives some of the grown-ups a hard time. Because while we expect the young people to submit themselves to us, the Bible says we are also, as adults, supposed to humble ourselves toward them. The Bible says don't drive your children crazy, but teach them with love and admonition. Hallelujah, Lord God. God opposes the proud, but he shows favor to the humble and the oppressed. Says that again. This is quoting a scripture in Psalms. Young people, 
Respect and submit to your elders. Old people, respect and be gracious toward the younger. Do we raise our kids with this value, these values any longer? You have to ask yourself that question. God gives grace to the humble and the oppressed. Again, he says this. He will make your enemies to be at peace with you. He will make your enemies to be at peace with you. Why? Because of his grace toward you. Romans 6, 14, For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. Hallelujah. See, the law says, Oh, you missed it there. Oh, you missed it there. Oh, you missed it there. Oh, no, you missed it. Oh, you missed it there. That's what the law says. But grace says, I forgive you. Grace says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden with sin, and I will give you rest. So the law came to show us what sin is. Sin can no longer rule over you because you are ruled by grace. And grace is a gift that you must receive by faith. Grace is also a gift that you must give others by faith. Not because they deserved it, by faith. 2 Peter 1 and 2, grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. God said in his word, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Grace and peace are yours when you know the promises of God's word through study and understanding and you begin to follow those words, those scriptures, amen? John 1, 16, out of his fullness, we have all received the grace in the place, we have all received grace in the place of grace already given. What does that mean? Grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. Hallelujah. God's desire is that you position yourself that when he sees the grace that is upon you, he will add to it. Be holy, be righteous, be loving, and be humble, and God will add to that grace. Romans 5.20 says, But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Amen? Sin builds upon sin, but grace multiplies where there is no grace. That means that grace is going to multiply it because sin is there trying to block it and grace will multiply the more. Grace will multiply even more the closer you get to God. Romans 5.21 So then, just as sin reigned in death, so grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay? So we just read that sin increased, grace increased more. And now we're saying that as sin reigned in death, because it kept increasing, sin was ruling over us, then grace might reign through righteousness. Well, how do we get righteousness? We got it by grace in Jesus Christ, by faith in him. So that Grace might reign through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, hallelujah today. Colossians 4 and 6 says, Let your conversation, your words, always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you know how to answer everyone. What does that mean? That means I don't care who's been doing what to you, saying what about you, talking about you like a dog. Let your words, your conversation, your actions always be filled full of grace, seasoned with salt. What does that mean? <clears throat> don't let the devil pollute your words. Don't let the devil cause your words to stink. But let your words be seasoned by salt, which is a preserver. It is a gift of Jesus' sacrifice. <clears throat> Romans eleven six 6 says, And if by grace 
then it cannot be based on works. If it were grace, it would no longer, hallelujah. If, if it were, I'm sorry, and if by grace, then it cannot be based on works because if it were based on works, then grace can no longer be grace. You cannot earn grace. You cannot pay for grace. You cannot receive salvation by works. You can't earn your way into heaven. Too many angry preachers make it seem like God is just standing there ready to whack you because you might have missed it somewhere. Hallelujah. If grace comes from works, it is no longer grace. Grace is freely given because of God's love for you. 2 Corinthians 9, 13, and in all and in their prayers for you, and in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because the surpassing grace God has given you. What does that mean? That means that you're praying for God to bless you. You're praying for God to protect you. Then you ask some of your friends, could you pray for me about I'm having trouble in this area? And because of God's grace on you, he gives you extra grace through them. So they're praying for you because you ask them to pray for you, but they're not praying for you out of duty. They're praying for you because the grace of God is shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost, making them want to pray for you and to have more grace toward you themselves. Hallelujah, Lord God. Oh, glory, glory, glory to God. So this is interesting that their prayers will go out to you, but their prayers will go out to you and want to do more for you through prayer because of the grace, the overwhelming grace that God has put upon them. Amen? 2 Corinthians 4.15 all this is for your benefit so that grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. God says, I want you to be thankful to me. God says, I want you to love me. God says, I want you to rejoice in me. He said, there are so many things God wants from us as our God. And he says, he, the more people who are reached will cause more thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. More people will be thankful the more people who are saved. And God wants many more people to be saved. Hallelujah, Lord God. Proverbs 3.34, he mocks the proud mockers, but shows favor to the humble and the oppressed. This is, oh, it's not in Psalms, it's in Proverbs 3.34. This is the Old Testament scripture that was quoted previously in the New Testament scriptures. God mocks those who mock him, but others, but shows glorious favor to the humble and the oppressed if he sees you're being oppressed and he see this is why so many people think they, they try to think that God hates Israel but God has destroyed every nation that ever went against Israel why because they hated Israel it was one thing to chasten Israel the way God wanted them chastened it is another thing altogether that you hate the chosen people of God and therefore God is going to chasten you. Maybe even hate you. Hallelujah today. Proverbs 22, 11, One who loves a pure heart and speaks with grace will have the king for a friend. Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you have a pure heart and you speak with grace toward others, not asking the King to wipe them out, not asking the King to destroy them,
but ask in the king's grace to be upon them. Then the Bible says the king will be your friend. Oh, hallelujah today. Final verse today is found in 1 Peter 4 and 10. And it says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's word in its various forms, okay? Each of you should use whatever grace you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Be a faithful steward of the gifts that God has given you. Okay? That's simple. A steward is somebody who manages something for somebody else. Be a, the gifts were given to you, but they were not given to you to abuse or misuse. They were given you to use to the glory of God. You, as a righteous steward of God's grace, should exercise those gifts on God's behalf in the way that God would have you to exercise them. And you should use them to serve others. Oh, hallelujah today. I was reading a book about a butler. And the thing about the butler is his attitude was always an attitude of service. That was always his attitude, was an attitude of service to God a service to his master. He humbled himself. He had been through a long life of killing and, and being in war and everything else, and then he was tired of all that. He was tired of the anger and tired of the rage, and he became a butler. And he found peace in being able to surrender his will to the needs of others, amen? Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. I wanna thank you for coming today. I hope this word was a blessing to you. It was a blessing to me to be able to bring it to you. I pray that God will continue to be miraculous in your lives. I pray that God will continue to give you the ability to give grace freely to those around you so that you might receive the free grace that comes through Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you today. I appreciate each and every one of you. Lord, I thank you for your love, your favor, and your grace. Oh, hallelujah today. I pray that you will open up the hearts and the minds of the people round about so that they too will surrender, Lord God, to you to receive your grace, hallelujah, Lord God, and the abundance of it in Jesus' name. We thank you for that today. We ask you, Lord God, to help those that have been proud and lifted up and arrogant to humble themselves and submit themselves to you in Jesus' name. We thank you for that today. And we give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' glorious name, amen. And amen. God bless you, beloved. What I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray until we meet again. God bless you, beloved.